to another episode of the iBook Guy. Um, I picked up this neat little device from uh, Fry's a few weeks ago for like $69. And I got it home and I started having some questions about it. And lo and behold, I really couldn't find any YouTube videos or any useful reviews or information about it online. So I took it upon myself to make this video to educate you about what it is and uh, why it could have been a lot better with a slightly different firmware programming. I'll get to that in a moment. But first, let me show you how it works. Um, you'll need to have uh, either an Apple iPad, iPhone, iPod, or an Android device of some kind. In this case, I'm just going to use um, the iPad. And the first order of business is you have to open the settings, go to the Wi-Fi, and find the Cloud Rover and actually connect to the Cloud Rover. Uh, the Cloud Rover actually acts like its own wireless access point with its own SSID. That's actually something I don't like about it, and I'll show you why in a minute. <clears throat> Once you're connected, you open their app and uh, it will actually show you right on screen what the rover sees from its camera and then you can uh, move the rover around <clears throat> and uh, you can drive this thing um, around house you can actually sit in one room and be driving it around in a completely different room somewhere else in the house using only what the uh, rover shows you on its camera which is actually pretty cool as you can see, uh, here's some video directly from the rover that I've captured for you to look at. And, uh, you know, you can pester your cats or dogs or guinea pigs or whatever you got in the house uh, with this thing. And uh, they'll get used to it after a while, but when you first bring it home, they're not going to like it. Okay, so this thing is a lot of fun, and um, it's got some really cool features, and it's pretty inexpensive. Now, let me tell you a couple of things I don't like about it. Uh, first, I want to talk about the, um, the way that it acts as a wireless access point instead of a client. And let me give you a little diagram here to explain why I don't like the way it works. Okay, so the way this thing works, the rover acts like its own wireless access point. Your mobile device will act like a wireless client. As such, all communication depends on the rover and the controller being able to talk directly to each other, which limits the range to around 100 feet or less. Now, imagine if they redesigned the firmware so that the rover could be a wireless client, and your phone could be a wireless client, and both would connect to a wireless access point. This would essentially double the possible range already. But wait, it gets better. What if you have more than one access point that are interconnected by Ethernet? This setup would allow the rover to be able to roam over a large business campus or school or whatever, while the driver conveniently sits in one place. Or better yet, you could use VPN and drive this thing from the other side of the planet if you wanted to. Now that would be cool. The second thing I want to mention that's bad about this thing is the camera on the front is supposed to be able to move up and down. And I don't know if this is a problem with just my unit or all of them, but um, I can't get it to move down. It'll move up then it won't move back down. I tried installing the app on several different devices and I got the same result. I could move it up and once I got it moved up so far it was looking straight up and I couldn't get it to go back down. And um, the weird thing is it makes a noise. You can hear when the motorized device moves the camera up. But when you push down there's no noise. It's like the, it's like the rover doesn't even get a signal to tell it to go back down. And uh, one of the interesting things is though there's an app uh, I'm sorry, there's a software program you can install on a Windows PC to control one of these. Um, so I installed it on a Windows PC and uh, it's all in Chinese. You can barely even understand what you're doing with this piece of software. It's very poorly written, but it does work. And the weird thing is using that software, the camera will move back down. Uh, but as soon as I connect it back to my iPad, the camera will go up, not down. So I just leave the camera down all the time. I don't really need it up for any particular reason. I'm curious to hear some responses if anybody else out there has one of these and if their camera has the same issue because I'm, I'm thinking it may be a bug in the software and not an actual mechanical problem. The last thing I want to tell you about this video, and let's see if this takes you by surprise, um, I'm having some trouble with my video gear. In fact, that's one of the reasons I haven't made any videos in a while and um, I'm going to have to go ahead and, and get me a new camera. But I realized in the meantime, I could use my iPhone 5 to record the video. And believe it or not, this entire video has been recorded 
on the iPhone 5. That's what I've got sitting on my tripod right now. Now, um, I'm getting my audio from a separate source, which I always do, so that, that's why the audio sounds good. But believe it or not, I'm actually using a, a program I downloaded called uh, Movie Pro, I think it's called, and it'll allow me to, to use a higher bit rate uh, and some other neat features. I can lock the focus and, and some of that kind of stuff. Uh, so it uh, gives me a little bit more professional style video. And uh, I guess I guess it works. I think the video looks pretty good. Uh, so you tell me what you think. <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you next time.